Worms, the silent superheroes of healthy soil, champions of the vermicompost, who, with the right conditions, turn scraps into the black gold gardeners' dreams are made of. It's a style of composting that can be done in any space, big or small, and costs very little to get started. Welcome to the first video of my vermicomposting series, where I help you get started with vermicomposting and answer your questions along the way. Today's video is all about starting a simple vermicompost, the single tote method. Now, before we really hop into things here, I just have to say what's up to all 400 plus new subscribers here. Hello, Amanda from Nova Scotia, Lika from Holland, Anita from Bulgaria. This is so cool. I love knowing where you guys are tuning in from. So tell me, my friend, where are you watching from? And what should we do to celebrate our next milestone of 5,000? I don't know. Tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. All right, the moment you've all been waiting for, vermicomposting 101. In this video, we are gonna talk about how you can get your vermicompost set up really fast and easy. Vermicomposting does not have to be hard, does not have to be complicated. And here to help you overcome the overwhelm, fellow beginner gardener, you can become an expert vermicomposter. So let's hop into things. So first up, you're gonna need something for your worms to live in, bedding. Today I'll be using some soil, but you can use compost, sphagum peat moss, cocoa core, anything that would be a good substrate. Next up, you're gonna need some worms. I have some worms on hand for my worms in the garage, but you can use my links down below to get some worms from Uncle Jim's worm farm. That's where I've purchased them in the past and I've always been really happy. Next up, you're also going to need some source of carbon. I'm using leaves because it's what mimics nature, but you can use anything from shredded up grocery bags to shredded up packing paper to cardboard, anything that's been dried up basically. Next up, you'll need some food scraps. This is what I have on hand. I usually try to go for things that are a bit more broken down, but here's a list of foods that you'll want to include. And here's a list of foods that you'll want to avoid adding to your vermicompost. You'll also need some form of grit, which is why I've got coffee grounds with us today. It's a great source of grit. You can also use eggshell or oyster shell. And last up, you will need a bin of some kind. There are so many different ways to vermicompost, but for today's video, I wanna show you just a really simple one that you can do in just any old storage tote. So we're using this one. Hello, <laughs> this is my worm bin. Now you might be wondering, aren't worms photosensitive? Is clear really the best option? I'm using the clear bin because it's all I stink and have right now. Quarantine life, you know what I mean? But um, something that might be cool is to use a clear bin and then you can actually see what's happening inside it. It's kind of a fun science experiment for kids to actually see what's going on inside, to see all the layers and all of that. So it might be a way to go, but just keep it somewhere dark so that the worms aren't you know, overwhelmed or anything. Now on top of my worm bin, I've got a homemade sieve. This is literally just one by twos, very poorly nailed together here with some quarter inch mesh screen on top. Um, I use this to make my potting mix for my seed starts. And I literally will rub the peat moss on the top like this and just, I make it really, really fine. And that's actually important for worms too. The smaller the component that you add, the better your worms will do. Uh, so I would recommend uh, breaking things down for your worms when possible. It's not necessary, but if you're really excited to get compost quick, you can help them along by breaking it down for them. All right, so time to make some lasagna. And by lasagna, I mean a worm bin, but we are going to make lots of layers as if we were making a lasagna, but with dirt and stuff. We're gonna get your vermicompost bin set up right now. So this, this soil is nice and fluffy and the worms are gonna be really happy to live in this. So this is really good stuff and it's a little bit moist, which is perfect for worms. So something like this texture is really good. So 
So something to remember here is that the more you break this down, the easier it will be for your worms to break this down and the quicker you'll get compost. I didn't do a very good job of crunching down these leaves, but you get the idea. So by squishing this banana out of the peel, I'm helping the worms be able to break this down just a little bit easier. Um, it was kind of a sticky mess if I'm honest, so it was kind of gross. I don't really recommend doing it like this, but you get the idea. The more broken down it is, the easier it is for them to break it down. So that's what I tried to do, even if it made my hand disgusting. <laughs> Here I am just using my homemade sieve to add another layer of bedding, another layer of leaves. Make sure you take out any Trader Joe's receipts. Our worms really like juice scraps, avocado and banana, but this is all I had on hand. So I'm adding these apple and this carrot. This part's pretty easy. Just sprinkle some grit in there and you're good to go. Right, and just like that, we have a very, very, very simple vermicomposting system set up. All that's left to do is drill some holes, some quarter inch holes around the top and put a lid on this thing and you're good to go. Now let's talk about some common things that could happen in this first 24 hours. Your worms could be a little distraught. Worms, like any living creature, need time to adjust. And so you're gonna wanna give these worms 24 to 72 hours to get used to their new environment. Now, with that said, you wanna make sure that their environment is what they like. I want you to know how to troubleshoot just a little bit here in the beginning. We're gonna go nosedive into troubleshooting more issues later, but just in the beginning, I want you to know that the texture and the moisture in your bin should be that of about a wrung out sponge. Too much and the worms can drown, too little and the worms don't have enough moisture. So you wanna get it just a little damp, but not too damp. If you need to add a little water, you can. I, I used moist soil and so I know that they're gonna be happy with that. Um, you can do the same thing. Also use moist soil and I'm sure that your worms will be happy with that as well. Thanks for joining me today, you guys. That is all I have for you. A very simple introductory video to vermicomposting. I hope this video helps you guys get started. Of course, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to help you. I do my best to get to every single one of my comments. And there's other people here in the community who are willing to help you too. So another great place to get those questions answered and to find community is in our Facebook group and with me on Instagram, where we get to hang out every day and chat all things organic gardening, home cooking, homesteading, and all that good stuff. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family on Facebook because that helps my channel grow. Now on that note of growing, let's talk about what we should do for the 5K mark. I wanna have a celebration here on YouTube with you guys live from the garden, write a song, name subscribers, decisions, decisions here, guys. When we hit that 5k mark, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below. What should I do? Thanks for helping me hit that 4k mark. Here's to 5k and here's to very healthy, very robust vermicompost in whatever space you might find yourself. Vermicomposting is a great solution if you've got a little bit of space. It's a great solution if you have a lot of space because vermicomposting is so good for your garden. More on that in future videos. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. If not, thanks for joining me today, you guys. It has been great to be with you and I'll see you guys in the next one.